A new International Space Station is brewing, and I am not talking about any government-run facilities such as the International Space Station or the Lunar Gateway. I am talking about a purely commercial venture, Starlab, which is scheduled to launch no earlier than 2028. This small space station is under the radar, and among all of the commercial space stations that are being planned, it is the most purposeful intentional when it comes to international partners compared to the others. Starlab has been creating partnerships internationally that most people, including myself, have not even been aware of. Today, Airbus posted on social media accounts a listing of all of the major partners of Starlab. And reading through this list, I knew most of them, but some of them were just, I, I follow this pretty closely, and some of these I just hadn't even noticed. There were four partnerships announced over the past four months. So let me bring you up to speed, but before that, let me back up and give you a little bit of history. So in 2021, NanoRacks, which is a company that's now under the Voyager umbrella, umbrella, they proposed a Starlab space station concept to NASA and they won one of the awards that NASA provided for the Commercial LEO Destinations Program, CLDs. Under the current design, Starlab will have two modules, one providing propulsion and energy, the other providing a habitat for astronauts and a laboratory space. They are saying it will be about half the size of the International Space Station, which I, I would need to see to believe because the ISS has many different modules, but we will see. Starlab is envisioned to launch in one piece on top of a SpaceX Starship no sooner than 2028. They say it will support up to four astronauts. I don't know if that's continuous or sorties. And they say it will have 100% of the capacity of ISS to do research. Again, I would need to see that to believe it because there's a lot of research facilities and equipment on the ISS. And they say they want to do about 400 experiments per year. Starship was... Per Star oh, here I go. I'm going to mess up Starship and Starlab. If I accidentally say Starship when I mean Starlab, just forgive me here. Starlab was initially proposed as a NanoRacks project. Now, NanoRacks got bought by Voyager, and now NanoRacks' name is no longer used. The first partnerships were announced in September of 2022. And the first one was by Hilton. Hilton has a fun history in space. Those of you who are older or history buffs might remember the Lunar Hilton that was proposed in the 1960s. So an actual space station concept around the moon. And that concept was floated again back in the 1990s. But most recently, Hilton actually did fly something in space. The Hilton Doubletree Hotel branch in partnership with Zero G Kitchen. This experiment was so cool. I remember when this was happening. They flew a Zero G oven to the International Space Station because when you think about convection and the way gases move, the way heat moves, heat transfer in microgravity, it is very, very different. So they don't know how to cook in space. Like we just don't understand the process of cooking in space. So what what are we going to cook in space? We're going to cook chocolate chip cookies. If you've ever been to a Doubletree hotel, you know that they give away freshly baked chocolate chip cookies, and that's what they did here on the space station. They baked chocolate chip cookies. The astronauts were not allowed to eat them. <laughs> I think I would have snuck one if I had been an astronaut. But getting back to Starlab. So in 2022, Hilton and Starlab partnered. Hilton and Voyager Space partnered to improve stays in space, designing crew lodging, hospitality suites for Starlab space station, Voyager and Hilton will partner in the areas of architecture and design, leveraging Hilton's world-class creative design and innovative experts to design, to design space hospitality crew headquarters aboard Starlab, including communal areas, hospitality suites, and sleeping arrangements for the astronauts. So that's pretty cool. Whether you see that as a stunt or whether you see that as a creative partnership, that's up to you. But considering commercial space stations want to go in the direction of space tourism as well as laboratory research, then it makes sense to bring in a specialty in tourism. At this same time, September of 2022, Ohio State University, the Ohio State University partnered in the research side of things. Ohio State was chosen as the site for the George Washington Carver Science Park Terrestrial Lab. So the way it's going to work is there's a terrestrial lab at the campus of Ohio State, as well as an actual science laboratory in space on Starlab. And the two will train and partner together. The analog laboratory will be a replica of the Starlab Space Station Science Park and allows researchers to test missions and conduct parallel experiments on the ground. Things really start getting interesting internationally in August of 2023, when they bring aboard Airbus. And from here on out, Starlab will be an independent entity separate from Voyager. That is a partnership between Voyager and Airbus. So it is a joint venture to develop, build, and operate Starlab. And this is very strategic because Starlab is a U.S. entity. 
However, in order to partner with international governments, there really needs to be international partners. The European Space Agency is more likely to work with a European company than with an American company if given the choice. Starlab will have a European joint venture subsidiary to directly serve the European Space Agency, ESA, and its member space state agencies. And then, somewhat unexpectedly, Northrop Grumman joins the team. Back when those commercial space stations, the commercial LEO destination awards were given by NASA, to Starlab and to Orbital Reef. Axiom had already gotten their award. There was also an award given to Northrop Grumman. There was very little information given about Northrop Grumman's space station plans. We had their initial concept and that's all we had. We didn't even have a name for their space station. So maybe it's not too surprising that Northrop Grumman decided that they're not going to do a standalone space station. They're actually going to give up that award, they give up that contract and join the Starlab team. So Northrop Grumman, if you remember, has bought Orbital Sciences back in the day, Orbital ATK, and they now run the Cygnus. That is a cargo transport vehicle that currently delivers cargo to the International Space Station. Northrop Grumman is to develop fully autonomous rendezvous and docking technology for Northrop Grumman Cygnus spacecraft and provide cargo resupply services for the Starlab Space Station. And then we get to this year where boom, 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 it's four announcements in a row. You have a U.S. branch, you have a European branch. What's next? Mitsubishi. April 4th of this year, Mitsubishi Corporation joins Starlab Space as a strategic partner, equity owner in the joint venture. The partnership is expected to expand access for the Japanese space economy and industrial base into the Leo marketplace. You've got the United States, you've got Europe, you've got Japan. What's next? Our neighbors to the north. May 29th of this year, MDA Space joins Starlab Space as a strategic partner, equity owner in the commercial space station joint venture. MDA, by the way, is the maker of the Canada arm. They are to provide full range external robotics, robotic interfaces, and robotic mission operations to the station, including the recently launched full suite of scalable module robotics solutions, MDA SkyMaker. Again, it's very strategic. The Starlab US-led partnership continues to expand, extending the joint venture's global reach into Canada. So you can see these different branches forming now. You've got United States, Canada, Europe, Japan. Who's gonna be next? Well, I don't know. They haven't launched yet, they've got plenty of time. But there are two more partnerships that they announced in June of this year. June 5th, Lufthansa Aviation Training and Airbus Defense and Space are developing an effective state-of-the-art training concept for a new space station Starlab. Lufthansa Aviation Training has been involved in the training of ESA astronauts for the ISS since 2000 and leads the European Training Consortium. So as an American, I admit I did not know that, so I learned something new there. Maybe you did too. The latest announcement came June 20th. Starlab Space announces strategic partnership with Palantir Technologies Incorporated. Palantir will become the exclusive supplier of enterprise-wide software data management solutions. So when you think about the commercial space stations that are currently being developed, there is no other space station that has such a wide global reach than Starlab. And this is absolutely crucial for the growth of these small space stations where they are trying to find users and partners and funding in all means necessary. They're not just going to rely on NASA as the primary funder. They can't. NASA does not have enough money. They need to find partnerships, users, customers, wherever they can. Another commercial space station company that knows this very well is Axiom Space. They have been designing international missions to the International Space Station, including the recently announced Axiom Axiom 4 mission. If you're curious about these commercial space stations and commercial space flight providers' international reach, then go ahead and check out this video next.